Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. Um, Richard Bloodworth here, and uh, as you can see, Sumerian September 2024. And uh, today's episode is going to focus on the Frost Giant's Daughter. So, um, so this is the next story in the line of uh, following the coming of Conan. Uh, and again, I highly recommend the Del Rey um, editions of these stories because they are written in um, they're written as as Robert E. Howard put them to paper in the exact order and in the exact uh, way and manner. Uh, so not altered in any way from his original writing. So it really is the best uh, way to. Um, I, I believe to step into Robert E. Howard's writing by seeing it in its truest form. So, the Frost Giant's daughter, uh, as compared to the, um, the Phoenix on the Sword, it's a much more simple story. Uh, there are only two real main characters in this story, and that is Conan and then uh, Ymir's daughter. Uh, Atali and the story is is kind of one that is not dissimilar from other depictions of uh, sirens uh, on the battlefield and such and luring um, you know like as if like sirens lure sailors to their doom you know on the uh, you know on the reefs and such and and then um, they capture them, kill them, or, or do whatever. And in this case, um, Atali goes to battlefields and lures the men that are near death uh, into the frozen wastes so that uh, her brothers, the uh, frost giants and, and apparently sons of the deity, uh, the god Ymir, uh, and and then her brothers will slay them and she will, you know, uh, get some kind of a, a joy out of doing that or whatnot. So she is certainly not an innocent player in this. And, um, and so the story really takes place. Uh, Conan is, is certainly younger than in the last story and he's still in his adventuring mercenary uh, time frame of of his uh, activities and he's along the border or somewhere along the border between Vanaheim and Asgard and if you know anything about the Hyborian age and the relationships between Samaria and Asgard and uh, Vanaheim uh, the Sumerians had always had a a better relationship, probably not a perfect relationship, but a better relationship with uh, the Azir of Asgard and a very contentious and really enemies, um, you know, going back probably ages uh, between the two groupings, uh, between the Sumerians and the Vanir, uh, those of uh, Vanaheim. Now, there's, there's some uh, ethnicity differences between the two and uh, and they do get into that and I will uh, continue with that in a moment okay sorry about that uh, brief interruption so um, so continuing let's so let's try to pick up where I left off uh, continuing the um, the beginning of the story has uh, just two warriors on the battlefield uh, one is from Vanaheim, the Vanir, um, red-headed, blue-eyed, still fair-skinned, uh, very similar uh, with the exception of the hair color to the Azir, um, more friendlier towards Sumerians, uh, who are blonde-haired, blue-eyed. Um, the, the combination of the three, so you have you know, the Vanir and the, uh, the Azir and Sumerians, are all barbaric, um, are all barbaric uh, societies. 
let's say they're, they're I wouldn't call them civilizations uh, because they're not built up like you would normally think of civilizations in the high Borean age. So they're all barbaric, they're all uh, very tribal and, and clannish and also uh, very warlike. I mean, they're constant warfare amongst the, uh, amongst the three, uh, typically Sumerians and Azir on one side and the Vanir on the other. Um, although I'm sure that there have been disputes between the Sumerians and the, you know, Azir as well. Um, but here we have the, the last scene of the, of the battlefield where it is just Conan on one side and a, uh, and a Vanir warrior on the other. And the Vanir warrior's name is not all that important, um, but it's their exchange that they have between Conan and the, you know, the Vanir warrior. Uh, the Vanir asks Conan for his name so that when he returns to Vanaheim, he will be able to speak of the last person that he killed on the battlefield. And Conan kind of mocks him back through gritted teeth because they're both uh, very battered and, and wounded. And Conan said, uh, you know, uh, no, you'll be saying my name in Valhalla, you know, um, indicating that, you know, the guy will have been killed by uh, Conan. And so that's where he was going to speak of Conan's name. Uh, and they they briefly clash one more time. And of course, Conan, uh, Conan defeats him, uh, kills him with a sword thrust uh, into his body uh, after getting really well rung on the, uh, on the head, fortunately helmeted head, um, from the Vanir sword attack as well. So Conan is kind of dazed and, and, and really just on the verge of death himself. And so he begins to collapse down uh, onto the snow, down onto one knee. <coughs> and the entire landscape for Conan changes. It takes on this strange mystical aspect to it. And um, he's kind of transported at least uh, visually, mentally, you know, into this kind of strange realm that um, it doesn't quite look familiar any longer. Um, and he sees this, this avatar, this, this uh, vision, you know, of, he doesn't know it at the time, but he sees this vision of a very fair skinned, reddish, yellowish, gold, you know, gold hair, um, and she's wearing nothing but a gossamer, um, like a shawl or dress or toga or something like that. But, I mean, she's virtually naked on the battlefield, and he is drawn to her, and she's, she's speaking to him, and in almost like a siren song, kind of, um, both mockery and luring him towards her. <coughs> and so he goes into pursuit. He's, he's driven either mad from the bloodlust of battle or she has ensnared him in some kind of a, a spell like trance. And so he's chasing after her across the, across the wasteland. And she's really luring him towards her two frost giant brothers. And she eventually lures him into her brothers and she's absolutely stunned that Conan manages to, uh, Conan manages to defeat them. And now she's actually afraid and she starts running and he continues after her and, um, at first, she, you know, she increases the distance between the two, 
but his barbaric endurance keeps him going on and his rage and anger keeps him going on and he suddenly gets his hands on her and she cries out and calls for her father the um you know the the god ymir and suddenly she disappears and all he has left in his clutched hand is her gossamer robe and he's eventually found by um another party of azir warriors that um were supposed to reinforce the group that conan was with and so they finally found him and when they talk to him and they, they're they're asking him you know why have you run out this far out here and he kind of says i was chasing after you know this uh this woman with you know um hair like none have ever seen and and so on and so forth and they literally think that he's crazy <coughs> and he's been brain addled from injuries and, and whatnot and on the verge of death just from frostbite and uh, and other uh, injuries as well and so it is an older azir warrior who says i have seen this avatar before and this is the this is the daughter of ymir the, the frost giant's daughter and they still don't believe him until conan holds up in his hand the gossamer uh garment that could be made by no human hand and uh, and that's where the story suddenly ends so it is a very very simple story um only really two main characters in the story and the it follows along that very classic tale of um the sirens or the like luring uh luring whether it be ships or in this case warriors on the battlefield uh, to their doom and so um very very good story uh very quick to read very quick to listen to i you know it, it took about 25 minutes to listen to the uh the audio tape <coughs> and it's just that very very um iconic story of conan the barbarian now so some of it has to do with the fact that the um the book covers of the time was a very very famous frazetta book cover uh where conan is fighting the two frost giants now i chose for i chose for this um i chose this image here um because number one the comic book is great and the artwork in this in this particular comic book is is unbelievable um but it has conan just as he's finished either uh fighting on the battlefield and then chasing after her so this is one of the images where you have both aspects being shown here you have him just struggling to chase after her and her mocking him and so he's going to go into the chase here so um you know again an, another great story uh to read for your first time if this is your first time seeing it i would definitely encourage you to go and uh, find a copy of it uh, in order to read or if you have it on audio certainly listen to it it's a great presentation on audio as well and i will be returning tomorrow <coughs> with coverage on the god in the bowl so as always thanks for joining i hope you enjoyed this video uh please remember to like and subscribe and to comment and and share and uh you know if you if you do subscribe make sure you hit the bell the bell so that you will get an alert when tomorrow's installment goes up and as well as some other um some other content that i will be uploading tomorrow as well so you will have a great evening and take care